little, we're a little premature in this whole concept of, of trying to get this done this early in the session. Everybody seems to feel like we were, we were intending on getting out of here in 90 days with a full budget. Uh, this is kind of usurping the, uh, the entire process and forcing uh, the, the legislators to do a three-quarter vote to draw this out of the CBR. Maybe, maybe there's other ways of doing this as we move into the future on this, this process and uh, in this session. Uh, but, uh, but I feel like, uh, are, we, are we doing the Finance Subcommittee of Education's work for them here by advance funding this? And, and uh, it, 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 I just don't feel comfortable with it. I like the idea. It's not a bad idea. But at the same time, I'm not comfortable with, uh, with throwing this out this early uh, before people have had a chance to really look at what else we're going to be doing with the budget the entire year. And uh, I, I don't know. Um, that indicated they were not going to uh, propose cutting K-12 education, basic K-12 education. This is exactly the same amount that was the actual amount that was in last year's K-12 basic education. So uh, in, that re in that light, there has been uh, somewhat agreement. Now, has the other body acted on that? No, of course not, because they haven't gotten the budget or anything else yet. But uh, the conversations uh, that I've had are that uh, they are not proposing cutting the budget. So this is exactly the same budget as was last year. Now, you'll see on the charts uh, that are in your presentation that there's a slight difference, a slight drop from last year because there were fewer pupils uh, last year than were anticipated in the management plan. So when it shows the 18 management plan, that was the estimated to be the governor's number and our number in 287 are based on the actual amount that was funded um, last year. So it's a slight dip, but it's not a dip in reality because it's the actual number that was paid out based on the student count. So follow up, Mr. Chair. The most important professionals in the state are getting demoralized. Um, they're leaving the university. They're leaving public education. They're leaving many jobs in the state that are important to the public because they don't know whether or not their job is going to be there. In the last three years, we've had this fight over some who have held out to the last minute asking for $67 million of education cuts. And I think if we're all on board that nobody's going to do that, we should get that out of the way instead of making people wonder whether they're going to have a job next year. Um, the idea that the public should feel confident that this legislature is going to get its budget on time, I want to get our budget on time, but there's not a great history of that in the last few years. So um, the, the goal of the bill is to make sure we don't send pink slips to teachers who take those seriously. Maybe people in this building know that those aren't ever going to be real. But people on the street, people who have jobs and people who have families, believe they're real. And they get something saying they may not have a job, and they start thinking about leaving the state. And it's happening in education and the university, where some of our best teachers are leaving the state because they don't know whether or not their jobs are stable. And when you lose your best teachers and you lose your best professions, professionals, you lose your ability to maximize academic achievement. We want people to stay in the state. And, um, and I applaud Representative Seaton for filing this bill um, because it really reflects a discussion that we've had in this building for a long time. Uh, you know, uh, government employee pink slips, trooper pink slips, and teacher pink slips and threaten, threats that you're going to lose your job are not taken well by families in the state. They don't know that it's a legislative game. They think it's real, and it shouldn't be a legislative game. So for those reasons, I support this bill. Uh, to me, is how do you prioritize the funding of it of teachers over Alaska State Troopers over everybody else? I mean, these are the many things that we have to decide in in how we develop a budget, along with what funds do we use to fund a budget? You know, last year there was a policy decision made by the majority in the House to not fund any budgets until 
taxes and use of the permanent fund dividend bills were passed. And we could pass a bill like this and it still wouldn't matter. This is, this bill in particular is, is highly supported, you know, by a lot of members. And, and I, I've talked to the sponsor and let him know that I, I probably could not sponsor or support this bill. Um, so I just want to make that known for the record because of the questions that I've got. Um, and again, we can be doing this as a legislature. There's, there's no reason why the Senate and the House can't get together early on right now and say we want to get education funding and get the education industry, as Representative Pruitt had mentioned, you know, in a concept or an idea of what their funding is going to be. There's no reason why you can't start those discussions right now. And so, uh, you know, maybe we can have something. We will have something here this week. Uh, the Senate's listening in on her. I know that's a big issue for them. But uh, thank you for the time, Mr. Chair, and the opportunity to, to ask these questions. Uh, Education Finance Subcommittee. Uh, the portions uh, that we have here are portions that are in statute. We have the BSA. We have pupil trans. Uh, or pupil transportation, those are statutorily done. Those are not considered by the uh, finance subcommittees. The, um, the things like um, uh, pre-K, uh, teacher mentor programs, the Department of Education, those uh, portions are still going to be in the regular budget. Those are still being uh, under the control of the finance sub education finance subcommittee. So. Just wanted to make clear that uh, this was not funding the entire budget. It is funding basic K-12 education. That is the BSA, fuel trans, and the other portions where people are required to receive layoff notices by state law. That would be the boarding schools and Mount Edgecombe. So that's, that's what this bill funds, basic K-12 education, and that's the where the agreement is. I mean, you know, other portions of uh, K-12, like um, bond debt reimbursement, uh, there is no agreement on that. Um, we are talking about getting out the portion that um, makes this bill different than, or these employees different than troopers. Troopers don't, aren't required to be given a layoff notice in May 15th or June. They are employees. They may go on furlough July 1st if a budget isn't done. But this is the only segment of the um, government where we have actually a law that says you must give advanced layoff notices to people. Uh, and so that's what this, is, this bill is taking care of, is making sure that we're not impacting those school districts and those uh, municipalities that are having to fulfill state law and um, don't know what their budgets are. So I just wanted to do, uh, um, go to the governor to be signed. And um, of course, it would remove those sections from the uh, general operating budget. But these, this is an operating budget bill um, separate for basic K-12 education alone. And uh, that's the way we can, uh, at this point in time, fund education early and let them know what it is. And it, it would be actually identified and it would all be done. Yeah. So, Mr. Follow-up. Representative Seaton. Um, yes, this budget would be a operating budget. It's not the full operating budget, obviously. It's a portion of the operating budget. Um, would have the same kind of uh, qualifications as any other. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Morrell. Telling teachers that they're possibly going to face $67 million, $70 million of education cuts, and we have an opportunity to tell them, no, you're not going to face cuts this year. Um, but I have a teacher friend who is one of the, I would personally say, um, one of the best teachers in the state. And he's leaving. He's fed up with it. He's fed up with the threats of cuts. He's fed up with getting the firing notices. He's fed up with it, and he's leaving. And there, he's not the only one. We're losing our best teachers, that goes from education to the troopers to the state employees who get these pink slips saying they're going to lose their job. They take that seriously. 
And if all we want is a state where our best people leave, this is what we're creating. This bill is an attempt to make sure that our best people stay and that families stay because families don't have to worry that their teachers are going to disappear. It's a smart piece of legislation. To go for several different reasons. <clears throat> if this passes, these sections will be removed from the full budget. You know, through the, through the finance subcommittee process, what if we discover that at, at transportation, you know, it, we just got a new increase in uh, minimum wage, which doubles the amount of money that uh, school bus drivers get? What if we decide that we need to add more money to transportation? Sorry, that's out of the budget. We aren't going to be able to do it. It'd have to be a standalone bill besides what we already have here because that's been taken out. A lot of other things are that way. We haven't gone through the subcommittee process to determine if we need to make changes. But if these items are pulled out of the full budget, sorry, that's already gone. I, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned there. Thank you. Do you have anything that you'd like to uh, go over with us on the PowerPoint here? I just want to make one clarification on the last slide. There's been some talk about the termination date for layoff notices and on my last Questions regarding any of the material that was in that? Okay, seeing none, before we go to public testimony, were there any other comments by the committee?